Paul Yoon is a professor of mathematics at El Camino College in Torrance, California, and is a NASA Solar System Ambassador. He plays a pivotal role in promoting STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to the public. He holds lectures to share the latest science and discoveries of NASA's missions, particularly Mars missions, that inspire the public. On today's Heart to Heart, we sit down with Professor Paul Yoon and learn more about his career and NASA's Mars missions. Joining us today on Heart to Heart is El Camino College professor and NASA Solar System Ambassador, Paul Yoon. Welcome to Heart to Heart. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Would you like to say hello to our viewers that are watching? Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Yoon. Uh, good to see you. <laughs> All right. My first question is uh -huh. basically, um, what do you do as an ambassador? What exactly does a NASA That's ambassador do? That's a very good question. Uh -huh. So. I'm a sort of a civilian volunteer, and then my job is uh, sharing the, uh, the latest science mm -hmm. and the discovery by um, NASA missions mm -hmm. and to the public by visiting museums, observatories, school, and also media appearance like this. Well, yeah, sounds so like here I am. <laughs> here you are. Uh, <laughs> definitely sounds like a lot of fun. Uh -huh. um, when and how did you actually get involved uh, in the program? That's a very uh, important question. I think uh, I've been teaching in college, on a, uh, that's uh, in California, mm -hmm. and then I'm a math professor, so I think most of my students are STEM majors, science, mm -hmm. technology, and engineering mathematics. So I naturally put myself interested in how do you apply mathematics and science. Oh, wow. And the space exploration is one of the great way to uh, putting mathematical concept. Mm -hmm. And I think a uh, very important thing is by involving NASA, uh, as ambassadors, I inspire a lot of my students. Yes, And I'm I sure. think I'll continue uh, this journey. Uh -huh. Now, uh, what brings you to Korea this time around? I mean, my motherland is Korea. Uh -huh. So my family moved to the United States when I was in high school. Oh. So, so I settled down. I've been there three decades. Oh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> now we you know, know my age now. <laughs> But I think it's natural. I think uh, it's, it's important to share this exciting uh, adventure of NASA's mm -hmm. missions to the general public in Korea and then uh, communicate with the academians. Yes. And so as an academic, I'm very interested by interacting with what other academic in Korean. Mm -hmm. It's fun meeting like this, like a TV appearance. Of yes. How lucky I am, you know? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna, how I'm going to appear on the TV, right? Mm -hmm. so. Uh, I did yeah. see you appear on a, you know, Korean television program uh -huh. as well. So you're obviously very, very busy. Mm. Um, I understand that you do give a lot of lectures, as you've mentioned. So uh -huh. what are your lectures on mm. usually? And mm. is there like one topic that the public or people are most interested in? I mean, all the ambassadors, they have their own interests, but my primary interest in Mars missions, as a what, researcher, I, I've been involving NASA human missions. So eventually, mm -hmm. NASA is planning to send a human 2030 or 2040s. Yes. So I want to share uh, what I'm doing. Uh -huh. I want to share this excitement with the public. So my primary interest is always Mars missions. <laughs> Mars missions. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Now, over the previous years uh -huh. in particular, I mean, mm -hmm. we have seen many novels, mm -hmm. um, films mm -hmm. being released as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, on Mars, mm. uh, what do you think is the reason behind this phenomenon? That's very, very important questions. Um, I think uh, Mars has always been part of the culture. I think I'm pretty sure you read Gulliver's Travel. Mm. Long, 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 long time to everybody, ago. right? Yes. Everybody read it. And then <laughs> even there, Mars appear. Uh -huh. And then I think uh, the, there's a book written by uh, Herbert George Wells, The World of Wars. Mm -hmm. And I think, I'm pretty sure you read that too, right? Yes. So the importance of that becomes sort of foundation of the modern, uh, like Hollywood movies, you know, mm -hmm. comics. So the, culturally, Mars has been always in the, the, uh, the Western cultures. So I think that people saw the interest in Mars and the scientific reason that drive the, I think, uh, NASA is heading to the Mars. I think mm -hmm. that become a pretty important role. Uh, I gave a lecture and then about 100 people show up. It was uh -huh. in July. And I was expecting a lot of young kids show up, mm -hmm. but about 80% was a senior citizen. Oh, is that right? And amazing thing was, uh, during the Q&A, uh -huh. you know what? They're asking only health issue all the time. Mm, health, such as? you know, how that's gonna affect my body health. So what I learned is, wow, 
that's a sort of an indicator how mm -hmm. much people in America are interested about space exploration, Mars. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, so I, was, I was really shocked culturally. I mean, right. I was the only expecting young kids show, but mm -hmm. senior students asking me about all this about space, space was situation, you know, environments. So I think that's where America is now. Right. Yeah, there are strong interest in space exploration. Very much. Yeah, yeah. So NASA has been mm. for many, many years, mm -hmm. years and years, you know, continuously exploring mm. Mars. Mm. Uh, so I'd like to ask you, mm. um, I mean, how have things changed in terms of research mm. and um, I guess in terms of like exploring mm. Mars mm. over the years? Uh, let's say, for example, mm -hmm. could you give us an example of what it was like in the past? What it's like that's now? A, that's a good question. How things have changed and possibly yeah, what question. you uh, think will happen in the future? I think initially people, very early stage in the, throughout the history, people thought that there should be a, you know, a living uh, organism like us mm -hmm. maybe uh, live on Mars. But later during the, what, the discover, mission, we discover not really. It's mm. very uh, desolate and then, you know, so it was a harsh environment. But now on we start to understand it's still habitable environment. Mm -hmm. There is a liquid water there, yeah. so maybe there's a great chance that not the what, like you and me, you know, it's a very developed organism may not exist, but maybe microorganism might still uh, present on Mars. There's a chance, but we don't know yet. But we're still keep looking for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think I heard that there, are, you know, people saying there could have been, mm. um, you know, it could have been possible mm. in the past mm. an environment for people to actually be able to survive on Mars. Right. But that's not exactly the case right now, right? How so do you see this? So that's that's a very good question. So mm -hmm. I think uh, the uh, Curiosity, the Mars rover, which send it, which land on Mars, 2012. Mm -hmm. So the years of uh, uh, research and and also NASA conclude. Mars should be habitable environments at mm -hmm. uh, some point in the future, I mean the past. So will we be able to travel to Mars conveniently or when will we <laughs> be able to That's, do that? But hopefully I think that happened. But I, I personally I believe that eventually humans will settle down on Mars. That's mm -hmm. what I see. Oh, it could be maybe so. 50 or 100 years, but uh -huh. I'm, eventually we are, we are heading to Mars. I think Mars colonization will take place. That's, so you, that's my personal belief. You think it's physically possible for us to kind of break away from the solar system and live on another planet? Wow, that's, you're, you're giving me a headache. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to answer the question. But or so personally, I think that, I mean, I look back at that, you know, um, here's just some analogy. This is mm -hmm. how I look at it. How about people 10,000 years ago? Uh -huh. uh, they were going after mammals. I wonder whether they could possibly imagine our present day. That's right. I think it's a miracle. I, I'm pretty sure our present was just completely out of their imagination. That's true. So now I want to ask you a question. Oh, no. How about 12,018 AD? Can we imagine how our future generation will live? It kind yeah. of scares me to actually think yeah. about the future yeah. um, because things change so right. quickly. Um, so I think it'll be a, a completely different world yeah. uh, that people will be living in. And so, people will have changed as well. So I'd like to ask a question. Do you think a human being could move out of solar system? <laughs> what do you think? In the future, Why yes. Why attack, you know? I would say yes, Okay, I think so too. Why not? Nothing Why is not? impossible, Why right? Why not? Yeah. Uh -huh. so that's how I look at it too, right? All right. Yeah. Now, of course, the entire process uh -huh. um, to you uh -huh may not be as complicated as uh -huh. it is for people like me. Uh -huh. um, so could you maybe give us a rundown or an easy to understand explanation of what's going on? I heard that you have a presentation. Oh prepared. yeah, sure, let's yes. begin. Okay, okay. <laughs> are, are you ready? So uh, let me give a sort of five minute uh, lecture. All you right, know? take it away. Okay, okay. That's, that's, that's what I do all the time, right? <laughs> Okay, so let's look at a slide. I think I want to start briefly. So where, where NASA is, I think mm -hmm. if you look at the bottom uh, corners, uh, we, using International Space Station, we've been learning about how space affects human bodies. We develop necessary technologies. We grow food. Mm -hmm. So we learned a lot for the last 20 years how we could uh, live on, uh, in space. So now NASA is planning to uh, head into the, uh, the moon, first of all. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to go there. We want to do what? send the orbiter more. Uh, and then the rover, the rover mission, and then eventually human mission. So through the moon, we try to develop necessary technology, and then by 2030s, mm -hmm. we're heading to the Mars. So that's a kind of what's go, what NASA is planning to next 20, 30 years. Okay. okay, next slide. So now what is the approach here? So if you look at the, the uh, picture, first one, uh, there are about six different strategies to get there. So mm -hmm. first one is, we 19, 1960s, um, 
people just uh, we NASA just fly by. That's a Mariner four uh, fly by, take the picture, but didn't have technology. But put it in the orbit. Right. So then later we developed uh, the Mavens, something like Maven, like orbiter. And then now if you look at the bottom left corner, that's a lander. That's mm -hmm. a uh, inside which landed on Mars November 26, 2018. Mm -hmm. And then now the left right corner, that's a Curiosity rover. Uh -huh. And the middle one is now we want to bring the sample back to Earth. Mm -hmm. So once you collect all this information, eventually we want to say what's the next step? Please tell me what, what mission? If you look at the, the Green, green arrows, that one is what? We're preparing for human missions. Oh, human missions. Yeah, so this is kind mm -hmm. of a uh, methodological approach of the Mars mm -hmm, mission. Mm -hmm. But now then, next step is, okay, how many orbiter lander, uh, you know, uh, lander and the rover did it send to the Mars? Can you believe we sent that many? That many? Since 1960s. Wow. That's Unbelievable, amazing. right? So the most chances, so not only the United States, but also former Russia and then the USSR and then Russia and then European space agencies, China, Japan, mm -hmm. India, they all try out. So it's, it's on the way, we're very busy. And then if you look at in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, these are rover and landers. Uh, these are very difficult. So let me explain how that happened. Next slide. So if you look at the, in the middle, there's a rovers, uh, small rover, Pathfinder, Spirit Opportunity on the left-hand side. Right-hand side is what, Curiosities. Mm -hmm. So it takes about seven minutes to land. Uh, it, it's about e entry, descent, and landing. It's very difficult. So one process is what, the small one use a balloon. If okay. you look at the left ah, corner, yes. but they, ha they hit the ground 81 kilometers per hour. So you know how do you protect that delicate machine? Mm -hmm. So that's the one, but if you look at the curiosity, that's really big, isn't mm -hmm. it? Right hand side. How, but, how, I mean, how big is it? Exactly? That's about your, your car size, about uh, the Mini Cooper size. Okay. So that one is, uh, balloon doesn't work. So now through that, to solve the problem, NASA would develop sky crane. Mm -hmm. So that's why I did through the NASA missions, it create uh, you know, new technology, which is gonna help out the uh, development economy too. Mm -hmm. So that's a process. So now here's the one, okay, mm -hmm. Curiosities found this very important picture. So right hand side is Earth, left hand ah. side is Mars, current Mars. Okay, Jennifer, here's a question. Okay. Where do you need to go to find those kind of, uh, kind of so rock bed? You know, there's a little pebbles there, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the left hand side. Yes. Do you know any place you could go and find out, see these uh, little pebbles? Uh, Maybe somewhere around where? Pebbles? Pebbles. So how about, how about you go the mountains, to the mountains, near the ocean? Mountain, ocean, or streams. Oh, right? sure, yes, yeah. streams. So what that means is, you know, this is the current uh, Mars, uh, Mars, what, the rock, bed, the, the pebble bed, mm -hmm. which means there must be water there. Must be or uh, must have been. Uh, yeah, and yeah. then what that means is, whenever there's a water on Earth, we find life. So we are very excited about, wow, there might be life. Next slide. Mm -hmm. And then this is methane. Methane means more likely, uh, you know, I don't, say, I don't say this, but uh, no way we could uh, see methane is what, when people fart, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bacteria that working inside the colon. So a lot of time, most methane on Earth is what generated by um, when bacteria kind of uh, acting on the, what, the organic Organism. material, uh -huh. right? So what, that, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Wow, there might be life, life? again. Uh -huh. But there's a chance that rock and then uh, water in, uh, interact, methane could be still produced. But I think both about this water and then methane is a strong indicator. So mm -hmm. NASA concluded that Mars should be habitable environment in the mm -hmm. past. So it's Mars 2020. Okay. We're sending this guy, uh, Robert, to the uh, Mars back 2020, July or August. So the, if you see the left side, we launch it and then it travel about mm -hmm. six to eight months. And it land, you explore. If you look at the bottom of the picture, that, that's me. Oh, that's uh, that to a NASA uh -huh. uh, JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, uh -huh. in November uh, 1st, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, the mission is under construction. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. This is Mars. Uh -huh. And if you look at the picture there, red and yellows are sort of high altitude area, like mountains. Mm. Green and blue are sort of low latitude, mm -hmm. altitude. So, so if you look, look at it, all the rovers, they went where? They're green or blue, right? What could that be the reason? Why did they go to this blue and green region, which is a low altitude? Because you want to find Easier the light. Easier to land? Or? That's a very important thing. Engineering aspect, thumbs up. Mm -hmm. But also more important thing is what? What do you try to go to Mars? To find biosignatures. Uh. So then what happened? You want to go to lower parts, mm -hmm. so that where these are, all the remains kind of build up. Right. So now, here's a question. Where do you think we should have put the Mars 2020? Red section, yellow section, high altitude, or lower section like uh, green or blue? Where did it gonna be? Green we or gonna... blue? Let's go to the next one. <laughs> high five. <laughs> okay.
Okay. You got it. I feel like I'm taking a test. You're right. After five years of discussions, mm -hmm. NASA decided to send what, Mars 2020 that another green section, so-called the zero creators. Mm -hmm. And then I was one of the voters to determine the landing site. Oh, I see. Wow. Yeah, so there was a four workshop. We've been involved. We, the NASA invited all of the scientists all over the world. Mm -hmm. And also, as you mentioned, engineering aspect is pretty important because you got to land it safely. Right. So scientists uh, involved it, and then um, I also chose about the zeros. Mm -hmm. So 2017, we chose three landing site candidates, and this year, last month, they decide um, the final landing site, uh, the zero creator, and then I chose that site too mm -hmm. when I voted. I see. So uh, now, what's next? Uh, from there, and then we are going to try to bring the sample back, and then we're going to send a human around 20 or. 2030 or 2040. Mm -hmm. So that's what can happen next 20 okay. or 30 years. Will you be one of the people that actually uh, makes it to Mars in 2030 or? So I think uh, my job that. is determining where <laughs> we should go. So I'm currently <laughs> involving my uh, research, uh -huh. determining where we should uh, send the humans. So where that Martian movie should, should take place. So that's what I get involved as a uh -huh. scientist, uh -huh. as engineers. And I see we have something right here in front of us on our table. Uh -huh. uh, it's a creation of yours. Yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's not it's not the best, but I I have some philosophy behind this. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, um, I, I have two reasons. I think to build this. I think NASA. I mean, definitely run by taxpayers' money. So I. I I just use this one from re using recycled material, like uh -huh. a, it's a cereal box. Ah. You can tell it's a cap of the uh, <laughs> bottles, right? Yes. So mm. what, what, what I try to deliver to the, uh, to the public, the point is NASA is doing best to save the uh, taxpayers' money by using uh, recycling previous one mission part. Uh -huh. And the second issue is I try to give some educational purpose uh, to the maybe parents, you mm -hmm. know? I think one of the best educational tools is what? Uh, recycle bin, uh, the stuff you could get the recycle bin, because there's no format. So maybe you could uh, take your kid, put all the stuff, and build something out of it. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, for that matter, I, I build this. Okay, and yeah. how does it work? How does it work? Yes. Uh, it's not working pretty fine, but I guess I could show them something like this. You know, I just made up. Maybe you could think about how I do this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think rover usually come. Uh, it's 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 a head kind of turn around. Oh, I, don't know. oh, I see. You could you could figure out how I do this. It's like <laughs> magic. And then when rover turn around, it target the what object, and mm. you shoot the laser, and if there's a target rock, it stretch the robotic arm. Oh, I see. And it drill, mm -hmm. make uh, the rock into pow uh, powders. Mm -hmm. It it uh, it draw in and then it analyze what chemical uh, compositions. Mm -hmm. What are the one uh, made of this rock? And they send the signal back to Earth, and the scientists on Earth, uh, NASA, analyze. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the is there organic material there or inorganic? That's how process goes. Wow, it's very yeah. interesting. I mean, it sounds so interesting, obviously, and very <laughs> exciting. I mean, uh -huh. uh, to work with scientists at NASA. So I'd like to ask you about uh -huh. the culture of NASA. What's the culture at NASA like? I think, uh, make it short, I think I had a visitor from Korea. Uh -huh. So we had a chance to visit uh, JPL, uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratories. It's one of the 10 field centers of NASA. Okay. So the visitor, luckily we had uh, two uh, volunteers from NASA engineer, young Korean-American mm. engineer. They show us uh, all fancy stuff. And then um, after the tour, I asked them, hey, what interests you most? And they said, these two young engineers, uh -huh. they love what they're doing. They're so passionate. Uh -huh. I think that's the culture of NASA. I think that says something big. Uh, mm -hmm. From their free uh, freedoms or joy, I think that's a source of uh, creativities, creative ideas, adventures. Mm -hmm. All this cool thing come out of from um, uh, their lifestyle because they're happy. Right. They like what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I yeah, think that's yeah. the strength of the NASA. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. we can tell from you. I mean, obviously, you look like you're really enjoying the work uh, that you're doing. <laughs> I have no fear. I just do it because I like it. I yeah. Just do it. I mean, I could feel your passion and all yeah. that energy. Yeah. That's... Just watching you talk about all this, you know, Mars. You could and... tell when you meet a lot of NASA science engineers. Uh -huh. I think you're gonna feel the same level of passion mm. and energies. Does it ever feel like you're back in school, you know, back in like middle school or high school when uh -huh. you're having so much fun experimenting with your, you know, That's friends very, in class? That's a very, very good question. I think, you know, when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. I was like a Tom Sawyer. Uh -huh. I was always in the <laughs> mountain, you know, <laughs> water, mm -hmm. river, and then that was my adventure. And I think that's very important. So I, I want to tell the parents, uh, also, and I, I involved as a Harvard University interviewers, mm -hmm. freshman applicants, I think kids must be exposed in nature. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I think they should have their own world when they're young. Yes. And then the creativity rise. And I look at Paul Yun uh, when he was a 10, mm -hmm. 40 years later, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't see any difference between me inside. Oh, I'm wow. still a young kid in my mind. So that passion is necessary to continue. And mm -hmm. then uh, I think um, that's, that's important, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think it's a good point that you made about, you know, children's education, how yeah. children, uh, it's, it's important for them to be able to run outside yeah, and just I kind think, of explore because that kind of builds yeah, their creativity right. as they, as they I, I think I want, to say, I want to add one more thing. I think mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure when, when I was young, I didn't, know what, I didn't know much about chemistry, physics, math. I'm pretty sure I was exposed to fundamental yes. concept of physics and chemistry uh -huh. somewhere, somehow, yeah. in the mountain, mm -hmm. in the water, somewhere. And I think that's to keep inspiring me, thinking about hey, why does it happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm. now it's a large scale project with a hefty budget. Mm. So why is the U.S. so interested or focused on oh, it? That's that's very that's a very important question. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely this is run by taxpayers' money. And the taxpayer, I think you need to spend the money very wisely. Mm -hmm. uh, it should benefit all nations. So NASA's strategy is I think NASA and the, the Washington DC is. They're the what they're putting these very challenging missions. Mm -hmm. It encourages people to develop new innovations, new technologies, which is very important for what uh, the strength of national economies. Mm -hmm. And the more important is, through that missions, we generate a lot of people who are interested in science, technology, so that they're very important, uh, capable labor force for the the economies. Mm -hmm. Not only the U.S., but Korea is also interested mm -hmm. in the project. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand with it back in 2016, Korea mm -hmm. um, signed. Uh, was it a space cooperation agreement right. with the U.S.? Know, yes. Now, yes. how is this beneficial to Korea? I think uh, that one, as far as I know, that contract is that agreement is based on the what more civilian levels of cooperation, in space, mm -hmm. uh, uh, space explorations. I think I know that Korea government is a planning or going to the what, uh, moon explorations. Yes. I think uh, NASA want to involve international collaboration, mm -hmm. so definitely including Korea. So I hope uh, this uh, NASA and the Korean science community work together uh, so that we can send the human and then uh, <laughs> continue to expand the universe. Yeah. Now, as you've uh, you know, briefly mentioned, Korea uh, mm -hmm. has set a goal to launch a mm -hmm. lunar probe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, uh, for the Korean Lunar Exploration Program mm -hmm. by year 2030 as well. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask uh, your view on this. I think it's possible. I think uh, nowadays, I think uh, Korea uh, has uh, good capabilities mm -hmm. and also what uh, uh, the international science community, I think definitely they want to work with what the Korea uh, space, uh, you know, science community. So I think mm -hmm. nowadays the chance is getting, uh, getting higher. I, I personally believe that Korea can make it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, we can't leave out uh, Nuriho. Mm -hmm. It was last November. Yes. Yeah, Korea mm -hmm. successfully test launched the, uh, was it the orbital rocket mm -hmm. called Nuriho. Mm -hmm. So what is your thought on this as well? <laughs> I think that's very significant. I think that's very encouraging. And mm -hmm. I hope that the uh, public continues to support space, uh, Korea's what, uh, I hope the Korea gen uh, general public support uh, Korea's uh, space missions. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I mentioned, by 2030, I think uh, Korea can make it. I mm -hmm. think that's personal, I believe. That's We're how talking I look at about, it. Um, you know, just flying out <laughs> to mm -hmm. Mars and the mm -hmm. moon, talking about the solar system. This kind of reminds me of when I was back in school, because mm -hmm. when's the last time, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, including our viewers, mm -hmm. actually thought about, yeah. uh, you know, the planets, the uh -huh. solar system uh -huh. so much in detail. Um, any advice, you know, like for children, if you want your child mm -hmm. to, I guess, grow an interest mm -hmm. in science, mm -hmm. uh, what other things can they do uh, other than, you know, uh, being outdoors and experimenting mm -hmm. nature? Any other advice? That's a very challenging question. <laughs> this is the most challenging question so far, you know? <laughs> uh, I think let them explore nature. Mm -hmm. I think we not, you know, to make a space exploration possible, we not only need the science engineer, but we need psychologists because mm -hmm. when you send a human, space, uh, space environment is very tough. Mm -hmm. So we need somebody who could help us to understand how we can make people more, uh, 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 you know, more adjustable to the environments. Mm -hmm. We need psychologists. We need a medical doctor. We need somebody who build better suit. I think uh, I'm pretty sure next 20, 30 years, I think the space fashion will thrive. Mm -hmm. We need some fashion <laughs> designer. I think anyone is interested in, just be good at your, your own chosen field, mm -hmm. then I think uh, you will contribute a lot to uh, this human endeavor to a space. Okay. Yeah. Now, before we say goodbye, could you tell us about NASA's uh, Mars exploration plans for the near future? Near perhaps? future, uh -huh. so uh, NASA just step-by-step, step, 
uh, NASA succeeded to send a lander orbiter uh, rovers. Uh, been very successful. So eventually, um, by 2030 or 2040, mm -hmm. we want to NASA want to send the humans uh, to the Mars. Mm -hmm. And then now NASA just saying today, you and me are living with first Martians. First Martians. Yeah, they are living with us today, and right. that's what NASA believes. Uh -huh. Okay, that was so much fun. Very interesting talk we had. Um, time for me to think <laughs> a lot okay. as well. Thanks for the quiz questions. I <laughs> uh, hope you had a good time as well. Thank you so much for joining us on our show. Thank you so much. 감사합니다. 감사합니다. <laughs>